Um, I believe methylcobalamin is the most absorbable form. I encourage people to choose cyanocobalamin, not methylcobalamin. One study that took vegans and uh, that with, who were B12 deficiency, and one of the people, it didn't even work at all. 500 microgram, 1,000 micrograms under your tongue, twice a week, three times a week, should meet everybody's needs. Here he covers your B12 with 200 micrograms of B12 every day, so you don't have to take a separate B12. And so if you do take methylcobalamin, I would recommend 1,000 micrograms a day. You only need 2.4 micrograms uh, a day. So that's where they got the new four to seven a day recommendation. And if you take a 5,000 microgram dose, it will not hurt you. Um, if you have normal B12 metabolism and absorption, and so you should be able to take one of those 500s, you know, chop it up in pieces and take, you know, a little piece uh, once a week or something like that. It can even be any dosage because the amount that we need is just a couple of micrograms per day. They all have more than that, and it's non-toxic. For anyone thinking that this is specifically a vegan thing, you need to do your research. There is no toxic dose of B12 that easy. There are no negative effects of it. There's a population that's at risk. They are men over 60 who uh, were ex-smokers. If you fit that profile, you must get your B12 level that you're taking to an average of less than 55 micrograms per day. Well, 2,500 uh, micrograms of uh, cyanocobalamin is all you need. And I discussed some of the reasons people might want to be concerned about getting their B12 blood level super high. Lung cancer risk in men who smoke and took a B12 supplement. And I've updated my recommendations. So you can go to nutritionfact.org and find those. So for supplements, 2,000 micrograms cyanocobalamin once a week or 50 micrograms uh, once a day. And those over 65 years of age should take 1,000 micrograms every day. If you are not regularly supplementing with cyanocobalamin, you are doing the diet wrong or if you're doing uh, fortified foods three times a day, so like at each meal, containing at least 190% of the daily value listed on the Nutrition Facts label based on the new labeling mandated January 1st. A uh, supplement that's specifically made for human absorption. And so what it says on the bottle doesn't necessarily mean what's actually in the pill and absorbed into your body. Intrinsic factor can only absorb about two micrograms of B12, and that's not sufficient. You need to take 100 or 200 micrograms a day, so by diffusion we can get higher amounts in the bloodstream because we're only taking it at one time. 500 years ago, we got our B12 the same place that deer and the antelope did. We drank stream water, we pulled up unwashed vegetables and ate them, and the B12 is made by the soil bacteria in the ground and in the water. It's high on the vegetables, cool, and you're getting it from it. Eating foods that we duck up out of the ground, because that food would have bacteria on it, it would have B12. There would be B12 in the water. It's made by tiny microbes that blanket the earth. We probably used to get all we needed drinking out of a mountain stream or well water, but we don't get a lot of B12 in our water anymore. It's not because the diet is naturally lacking, so therefore it can't be the proper diet for us. All right, so there you go. You all did it wrong, and you all did it right. It just depends on which doctor you choose to ask, because this is a vital vital topic for vegans and if you don't get the b12 right then you're gonna die so look at this one says take one type one says take the other type one says take one dose the other says take the other dose one says no fortified foods will count the other says fortified foods will count one says that you can get it from water and i have other clips of them saying that you can't get it from water but it's just too lengthy to put in and so this is the thing is that I used to believe these people as being authorities for my health and the way that I'm going to choose to live my life. And you realize that they don't even take their own advice or take each other's advice. Why should I take your advice? The other doctors won't even take your advice. They do something completely different. So who am I supposed to listen to? If I wanted to go vegan today, I wouldn't know what to do. Based off of the information that I hear from these people, it's like, choose your favorite doctor and hopefully they're right. And if they're wrong, you're gonna be the one who suffers from it. And just realize that whenever you talk to a vegan about diet, they're gonna use the word diet. But when they say diet, they're also talking about medicine for themselves. But they're gonna do an unfair comparison between two different diets and they're gonna do their diet with medicine 
specific medicine to, to alleviate the symptoms of their diet. And the thing is, is if these people don't take B12, they will just die. It's messed up. Maybe if the idea is that diet, like the definition of diet, also includes medicine, then let's compare two diets. Let's compare the vegan diet without medicine, and let's compare the omnivore diet without medicine and see which one is better. Or let's compare the omnivore and the vegan diet with medicine and see which one is better. Because at that point, you're not even having a conversation about a diet anymore, assuming we have the same definition of diet. You're having a conversation on who has the best medicine. And at that point, you could always just extend it and say, well, just give me better medicine. I can eat all McDonald's if I want to. And the diet's not wrong. It's actually the better diet as long as you give me the right medicine.